Hello and welcome to the programme. This year, Austria and Ukraine are celebrating a bilateral year of culture, which represents an important milestone in cultural exchange. Under the hashtag AustriaUkraine2019, this initiative sets the goal to bring together the creative potential of both countries and thereby facilitate stronger cooperation. Now, I'm pleased to say to talk more about the cultural year and what events are planned in both Austria and Ukraine, we're welcome to our studio today of Hausbrand, Director of the Austrian Cultural Forum, Kiev. Hello, thank you so much for coming here. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so this sounds like a fantastic programme of different events uh, throughout the year. But before uh, we talk about those, and we have a lot to talk about, uh, can you uh, firstly explain to us about the importance of cultural diplomacy and the role it plays in strengthening ties between Austria and Ukraine? Now, I believe that cultural diplomacy is awfully important in international relations. Uh, I don't say that uh, because I happen to be the director of the Austrian Cultural Forum, <laughs> but fact is culture is probably the most successful ambassador the world has ever seen. It builds bridges, it connects people, and that's also what we want to do during this year of culture, you know, mm. um, with Austria and Ukraine, to connect people and to build bridges. And can you tell us a bit about um, what you have planned as well, because you have a whole host of events. Um, can you sum these up in a, a couple of minutes? Do you well, think? Well, when, yeah, when we first sat down, you know, and started planning uh, this culture year, we had basically two options. One was to do um, a limited number of events, you know, large scale, large budget, or to spread out a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and we clearly opted for option two because we wanted to reach as many people as possible. So in total, there will be at least 50 events and projects that we're doing all over Ukraine, from uh, Mariupol to uh, Kharkiv and from Lviv to Odessa. Yeah, I think this is great, actually, because it's not just centred in exactly. Kiev, but also um, I would imagine uh, you have Ukrainians who are going to go to Austria as well. So it's not all one way. Is, is absolutely, that right? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, uh, as, as for Ukrainians in Austria, it, it will be mostly the Ukrainian Institute which mm. organises that, which is our partner in this. But uh, we also have an artist in residence program where we invite Ukrainian artists to Austria. And um, what sort of events do you have? So you have film screenings, um, different exhibitions. Can you tell us a bit you more about that? You, you, you name it. We have actually everything. Okay, from... Give me a couple of ideas. What, what can I look forward to seeing in Kiev? Uh, for, for example, example? the film festival, the, the annual Austrian film festival, well, will be at the book fair, um, of course. We'll um, be in Lviv at the chess festival. We'll be in Mariupol at the Gogol Fest. We'll um, do a theatre production with Coleso Theatre mm. uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and also, um, as well as all these different events that you have planned, you have recently um, published a new website That's as well, uh, which we can show a bit of uh, now. So can you tell us a bit more about the website, what people can find on there? Yes, it's AustriaUkraine2019.com, which we mm. launched last Friday. It's a beautiful project, I believe, because uh, it's cultural cooperation in action. Yeah. It's a joint project with the Ukrainian Institute, and um, the idea was to create a platform that allows us to feature all the projects they were doing both in Ukraine as well in Austria throughout this year. Mm. And it's a dynamic place, so to say, a, a dynamic uh, um, cultural calendar, you know, because we constantly update the website as new projects emerge. So people should keep an eye out then, a very close eye out. Absolutely, yes, yes. And it must be quite daunting as well, uh, realising all these uh, different uh, projects. How, how do you organise this? And perhaps uh, if people didn't know about this, how do they get involved themselves? Is it uh, still possible? Well, every, you know, every project is unique mm. I, um, and every project demands uh, a different approach and different partners. So as, uh, sometimes we cooperate with the Ukrainian Institute or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the Ministry of Culture. And then again, and in the majority of cases, as I say, with uh, private initiatives, with festival organizers and individual artists. Many of them approach us mm. and they already have a very clear idea of who they want to feature in Ukraine with Austrian artists. Yeah. And personally, I find this very encouraging because it shows that we are on track with cultural cooperation and exchange. Yeah. And, and what do you think actually makes uh, Ukraine so attractive for Austrian artists and musicians and filmmakers who perhaps want to show their stuff here? 
Well, I believe, you know, I, I believe there are so many things we do not know about Ukraine. In Austria and other um, Central and Western European countries, all we hear is about the uh, sad situation in Donbas. That's part of the Ukrainian reality. But there are also other aspects, like the modern Ukraine, a progressive uh, Ukraine, you know. And um, Austrian artists, I think, are eager to discover these aspects. They're the avant-garde. They're yeah. the first ones to come. Yeah, and it's true because a lot of people might say or try to compare Ukraine, uh, Kiev as the new Berlin, but it's a bit cliche and really Kiev is in a, a league of its own. Leave it with Kiev. Kiev is good enough. You know, Kiev is Kiev is unique. Mm. And, you know, I've, I've been here only for a few weeks, but I can uh, tell you it's, it's so exciting. You know, it's so lively. It's so energetic, mm. especially in the field of arts, you know, like uh, there's so much going on. Um, we don't have to call it a second Berlin. Yeah. And, and what have you been impressed by so far? You said you've only been here since uh, January. It was a few months. Um, have you seen any particular shows or been to any particular venues that really stood out for you? Um, Honestly, I haven't had the time really to do you're that. Because, all the exactly, <laughs> we've been very, very busy organizing this uh, this year. But no, wherever I go and whoever I talk to, uh, what impresses me most is the energy I feel. You know, in and the, the determination, the determination. And I can't say whether it's because of the challenging times or in spite of it. The fact is, this energy is there, you know, and people will not allow anything to take their culture away. Yeah, and uh, I would imagine that history also plays a large part in it as well. Ukraine and Austria do have uh, historical connections well. As there's well. one aspect, you know, of course, of uh, um, uh, cultural exchange, you mm -hmm. know, with the western parts of Ukraine, which uh, once be, uh, belonged to the Habsburg Empire. So we, we have um, a few historical topics that uh, we want to talk about, and that will also be one of the projects we'll uh, organize a symposium. There's a joint uh, Austrian-Ukrainian uh, Commission of Historians, mm -hmm. and we'll set up an event. Yes. Well, that's, that's very interesting. And um, it's, it's not just uh, the historical aspect, but also aspects of uh, remembrance. Absolutely. Um, so um, ha what is the criteria for these different organizations or people who want to get involved? What are you looking for, perhaps? Well, generally speaking, I would like to say we, we have an open door policy. So anybody who has an interesting uh, project proposal is welcome to get in touch with us, you know, and then we always find time to sit down and talk about these ideas. It doesn't mean that in all cases we'll be able to support, mm. but um, we always are eager actually to hear what people have to say and the interest, uh, the interest ideas to bring to the table. Yeah, and I, I think it's um, really interesting for, just from my point of view as well. Yeah. It's, it's really good uh, if people are coming to Kiev or people who live in Kiev go to these different events because you learn so much. Absolutely. Even when I go to, uh, say, the, the British film festivals, I see films that perhaps I wouldn't even see in England. So you, um, do it you is think, educational. Yeah. Culture is always educational, and what I sense here is uh, there is this uh, desire to learn. You know, people are curious; to, they want to see what's happening elsewhere, and that's, uh, I mean, the best environment for somebody like us who do, uh, do culture, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. And, and culture is only one part of the Ukrainian-Austrian relations because President Petro Poroshenko, he, uh, I think it was a few months ago, went to Austria. It was a very high-profile visit. It was on uh, national television and uh, there was a, a big ball and it was very grand, very impressive. Um, so how would you evaluate uh, cooperation between the two countries? Because it's something that's uh, not so much talked about. Is it quite positive? Is there a lot of different initiatives? I, I, I believe so. You know, there's a lot. I mean, I don't want to go too much into business, you know, mm. but business-wise, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of uh, Austrian companies who invest in in, uh, in Ukraine. And given the size of Austria and Austria's economy, actually, we, we are very well placed here, mm. you know. And of course, politically, uh, Ukraine is important to us. It, it matters to us that Ukraine does well and develops well, you know, because if Ukraine has a problem, we have a problem as well. Mm. And also, it helps that you have a lot of good partners in Ukraine. Can you tell us a bit about the partners who you are working with to put on this uh, cultural festival? Yes. Depending on the um, projects, of course, mm. you know, sometimes we cooperate with uh, official partners uh, like the Ukrainian Institute or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or some municipalities. Mm. But in many other cases, you know, it would be um, private individuals, you know, who, we, who are partners. 
Mm. And uh, it's, I think what's incredibly interesting is um, for these different cultural events in Ukraine, they're not just state uh, sponsored or state supported, but actually they often come from very small groups that are trying to do a big thing. Is, uh, absolutely, this well? absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, this is a very strong impression that I've had. You know, during these first weeks, people do not wait for anybody to provide culture or to do culture. They take the initiative into their own hands. And out of that, you have the most wonderful initiatives and festivals popping up here and there. Yeah. You know. That's very interesting. Uh, so before we uh, round up, can you uh, once again remind us of uh, the website that people should Austria go to? AustriaUkraine2019.com. Perfect. Check it out. Thank you so much for coming in today. That was Thank great. you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. That was Olf Hausbrand, director of the Austrian Cultural Forum Kiev. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more with UATV.